Hello and welcome to Merlin's Magical Storytime. Today we are going to look at the story, Maybe the Moon. And Merlin and myself will be sharing how this can support children with their whole emotional well-being. So let us take my little hood off and get cosy. So if you're listening on your own, you might want to get curled up with a blanket. You may wish to have a hot drink. Maybe you're in bed, wherever you are, perfect. And maybe your parents or an adult's with you as well. And we're gonna look at this lovely story today. And I'm gonna share a little bit about how it's going to help you as a young person with your emotional wellbeing. So before I get on, I want to show you what I've been doing with Merlin. So Merlin's been having a bit of an upgrade and his rainbow hair, his rainbow mane, has had a bit of an upgrade. So he has got all the colours of the rainbow. And so now he's looking like a really magical unicorn now, isn't he? So he's going to sit on my lap. Um, and before we begin, I'm going to read the back of the book. So I wonder, do you know what the back of the book is called? The text that we have on the back of books. It's actually called the blurb. And the blurb basically is a little snippet of what the book's about. And sometimes you get uh, people that have read the book who will say a little bit about what they think about it as well and how it can help the people that are reading it. So this is um, by the author. I'll tell you the author in a little bit. We'll read the blurb first. So on the back it says, Maybe the moon, so high above, is shining on me and the friends I love. Eric feels like the luckiest boy in the world, living in the forest with his animal friends. For company, when he moves to the city, Eric wonders whether he can discover happiness there, away from the home he loves. And then also it says, filled with enchanting illustrations, and featuring a gentle rhyming refrain, artist Francis Ives, debut book finds beauty and friendship in unexpected places. Now that's really, really interesting. So he mentions then the artist is Francis Ives. But also on the front, it says Francis Ives. So Francis Ives is the author as well as the illustrator so the illustrator is someone who saw these beautiful pictures and designs on the book so i really really love this because we've got maybe the moon and we've got someone sitting on the branch of a tree looking at the moon do you think that could be our main character who we've just read about so eric is going to be our little character so i'm really really excited to read this so we've read the blurb um, it's got some rhyming in it as well. I'm going to focus more on what the moral of this story is. And I hopefully this will help you with what you're dealing with in your own lives as a young person. So it mentions that Eric um, has to move to the city away from his animal friends. So we're going to look at becoming resilient. I think it's really important because through life, there's lots of things that happen that mean we have to adapt and change to situations. And so Eric, he's going to be dealing with, we'll find out in the story, he's going to be dealing with moving to the city from, from a beautiful countryside and forest place. So um, we're going to be looking at how he, he adapts and becomes resilient to living in the city. So I'm going to get started on the story. So let's go. And it's beautifully illustrated by Francis Ives. That's so beautiful. Once there was a boy called Eric who lived in a forest. The look where he lives, he's got his wellies on, he's got a little river, he's got the ducks, a fox. Can you see any other animals in that picture as well? They're beautiful and tranquil. I wonder who this character is here. We'll find out in a little bit. Eric loved to help his mother in their garden and play with his animal friends. So 
So Eric's mum is planting and sowing some seeds and tending to them for all the wildlife and the greenery and the lushness. He felt the happiest boy in the world. I can imagine. Oh, he's climbing the trees. He's got a badger underneath the fox, the birds. And he's got a playground all to himself, it seems. At night, he liked to look up to the sky. What do you think he saw in the sky? He saw the moon. I see the moon so high above, shining on me and the friends I love, thought Eric. So there is rhyming there with using the moon. And can you see what is, what animal comes out at night time? This is a owl, isn't it? We always see owls usually at night time, mostly. Because they are nocturnal, they sleep during the day and they come awake at night. One day when winter had turned the forest white with frost, Eric's mother took him on a long journey. So winter's arrived, the snow, the frost. Are they driving to where they're going? They're actually walking. Walking, interestingly. I wonder how they get into where they're going. Have you got an idea where they're going? So look, we've gone from all this lovely green on the other page. All this lush green here, and we're going to the city. It's not as lush and green. So Eric's mother took him on a long journey. Who would have arrived? What do you think Eric's feeling? Going from that lush green playground of animals and beautiful nature, all the elements of water, we've got the air, like the air, maybe even the Higher from the sun as well, the warm on those sunny days. And now he's not got much colour to the city. I wonder whether he's feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the darkness that we can see. Maybe he's a little bit sad. So they're off to the city. Eric and his mother walked through busy streets to their new home. What do you think, Eric's? drawn to. He has lots of animal friends in the forest. He's looking at the dog. He's looking at what's familiar to him. That night when he gazed up to the moon, it all looked so different that it made Eric sad. So he saw that moon initially over the beautiful countryside and forest and now he sees the moon over the dark city. He missed his life in the forest more than ever. Maybe the moon so high above is shining on me and the friends I love. Have a look at Eric in his bed there. He's gazing out that window, reminiscing and thinking about what it was like when he lived. And one thing I want to say, that rhyming he's using, maybe the moon so high above is shining on me and, my, and the friends I love. He's using the moon as an icon, a point of symbolism to help him connect with what he loves so much. And he's using that in a rhyming term, but he's still sad. So that, that rhyming is like an affirmation. He's using it to help maybe bring some positivity into his life. Okay, let's have a look. The next morning, Eric told the cat who lived in his house, all about his forest friends and what they like to do together. So he's reminiscing, he's really thinking back about when he lived in the forest. He's, he's missing that connection to being in nature. So the animals are his, uh, are his way of feeling that he's back where he was and feeling that happiness that he had. So he's um, trying to see use the cat as a bit of a friendship, as a bit of a um, helping him feel that the animals from the forest are like the cat that he has. Eric decided to go out and explore the city. So he's, he's using his resilience now that he's felt sad. He's used that poem and that rhyming as a, I'm gonna help this to get me through this difficult time. He's talked to the cat. 
please use that as an emotional release by talking to the cat, letting go of all his worries. So we go to explore the city because maybe that first impression of seeing all that dark, dark buildings is a bit of a misconception. He got to know the corners. He got to know the creatures, the children and the challenges. He explored the city from top to bottom. So instead of sitting in that fear, instead of sitting in that sadness, Eric has chosen to go out, be resilient and go into that zone of being uncomfortable to find things that he loves. So he's found the new creatures, the dog. The dog, that was the dog at the beginning, wasn't it? The cat, he's found some new friends. He's found the playground. And what else has he found? He's found a water fountain. Now, water was a key thing for him living in the forest. And as well, he's found this beautiful green space that's been hidden. That he didn't always know about. He's found some slides, people to play with. So I wonder what's going to happen on the next page. Is it just going to end there? Or is he going to expand his resilience and bounce back? from being sad into positive. Look at all this green, this lush green. And can you remember what Eric's mum was doing in one of the scenes? <coughs> she was doing something. And she probably helped to teach Eric these things as well. Eric showed his new friends how to plant a garden and help it grow. So his mum helped him with skills to tend to the earth, nurture the land, and do something that filled his heart up and helped him feel happy. So he's sharing his gifts of wisdom, that knowledge from his mum with his new friends and sharing how they can look after the earth. Even when you live in a space that's very built up, you can live somewhere and still see the beauty within. So I wonder what vegetables or what crops do you think they're growing? What do you think these could be? Maybe cabbages, maybe lettuces. Um, we've got some colourful ones here as well. So are these berries, are they grapes? And his mum's there too. I think his mum's there in the top right. So socially, he's made these new friends. He's meeting and finding things to meet his needs to find happiness. He even got used to the moon. So his moon, he thought that moon just lived in the forest. And then when he saw it, he used that then to help him come to terms with that move, that transition. So he, he can sit with his friends, he can sit with the animals, he can look at the moon and he can find that beauty within the moon. And that, can you remember that rhyme? Let's see. Oh, we're not to that rhyme just yet. Interestingly, one spring day, so he's been there for how long? He left when the snow and the frost happened and he's leaving on one spring day. So how many months do you think he may have been in the city? Hmm, interesting, I'll leave that one with you. One spring day, the time came for Eric and his mother to leave the great city and go back. Eric told his forest friends about his adventures and the new animals and children he had met. He's sharing that wisdom again. He's sharing his knowledge of going to a new place and that that scariness, that fear didn't overwhelm him, didn't contain him. He found that beauty to remember. He showed the people in the city things to help them. Now he's coming back and helping the people in the forest to share the goodness with them as well. And he's sharing some good memories, the water fountain, the memories of in the garden, digging up the plants and things. He showed the memories of exploring the nooks and crannies of the city. So really, he's learned some new experiences. That night, Eric looked up at the moon Oh, sorry, that night Eric looked up at the sky and thought, 
I know that the moon so high above is shining on me and the friends I love. Whether we live in the forest or play in the park, we are all joined together by the light in the dark. That's so beautiful. So the light from above joins us everybody together because it is accessible to everybody. That moon is a bit of a guide for all of us. What a beautiful way at the end of that story. So absolutely beautiful. So I just wanted to touch on the moral of it's not just about resilience, it's about friendship, this story. It's about finding that social aspect of life so that you don't feel lonely, so that you feel understood. You're seeing the beauty of something in a different way. So the moon at first, he didn't really connect with as well, but he used it to find that affirmation that, in that poem to help him feel a bit more uplifted. Emotionally, he found that cat, someone he could trust. He trusted those animals in the forest, that the cat and all the other animals that he met in the city helped him to feel back at home again. So, we can adapt and change to our surroundings and our environment. And although it may feel scary, it may feel sad that we have to move and, and change locations, we've got it within us to have that resilience and to manage. And happiness is where we want it to be. We can find happiness in many, many things, although it may take us a little while to get there. But having that support from the people around you, your friends, your family, animals really help to push you along and to bring you into that place where you do feel happy. So Merlin has brought you another story of his magical story time. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And as you can see behind me, we've got a few selection stories here. Some of these I've already told to you. So we've done one tower. We've also done a secret with sharing. And I think quite a couple of years ago, I read the Gruffalo. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be looking at these two books. Um, one's a river of stories and one's a fantastic book of feelings. Um, so please check out my channel in the future weeks. And I hope you've enjoyed this story with me. So if you want to know more, Merlin, he is going to be launching his new book as well soon with me. Um, Merlin's uh, Magical Journey is coming soon. Um, can't wait to share it with you. It is going to support your children with their emotional well-being as well. So have a fantastic day and come back and listen to this on replay. Um, and make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future episodes of stories. Have a great day. Take care.